Hello again, everyone and no one, and welcome back to the Great Partition in Europa Universalis 4. I'm Paragon Saber, and hopefully this will uh, this video will look a little bit better than some of the past ones. Uh, I'm still not going to try to record in 1080p, I think that might be a bit of a stretch, but uh, I was able to bump things up to 60fps, so uh, here's hoping that the video has a tad better quality. I frankly can never really tell much of a difference, but those of you that have any graphic sensitivity at all should hopefully uh, have a little bit better viewing experience now. Last time was really just consolidation after the end of the League War. We did see Nitra take back most, or rather all of the lands that had lost to Hungary, uh, as well as Serbia cleaning up uh, Vojmodina, I think that was Toronto all before. And we do see the Hungary tag simply lost, they were in Oltenia, but uh, Kandar has stepped in on that. Uh, otherwise, we do see that Spain hasn't been able to get any of its lost territory back, uh, including some pretty decent provinces like Valencia, lost Catalonia, 37 development in Valencia, great province. And other than that, things were mostly quiet. We did see Livonia up and eat Estonia, uh, did not give them any chance to thrive despite being released again. I believe we also saw the final loss of Saruhan, so uh, rest in peace to the White Hand as far as this campaign is concerned. I'll go ahead and boot her up again and uh, see how things go. I don't know if I mentioned it in the past couple parts, but the Age of Absolutism did begin uh, probably in 1610, considering uh, global, time, uh, global trade spawned very much on time. So uh, we will have nations start to crew absolutism. You know, hopefully Prussia will be one of those. They're definitely a nation that uh, benefits from a bunch of absolutism. <laughs> Other than that, uh, we do see that Venice is trying to take over the lands of the city of Burgas, that being one of their former, former trading cities. Of course, Venice now and has been a monarchy, so uh, not exactly able to do lead trade leagues anymore. But they still have quite a few... Oh. They have chosen to vassalize the city of Burgas, and I completely forgot that uh, all of their vassals had been released from them in the aftermath of the League War. So, uh, the likes of Epirus, Achaea, and, uh, and Maria are free again. Good for them. And we do have Burgas vassalized by the Venetians, because these lands, interestingly, are... Catholic, I would have thought that Venice might have gone for an annexation then. Usually, uh, I was under the impression that vassalization was more reserved for different religion or vastly different culture, that sort of thing. I mean, Venice accepts Greek. They don't accept Bulgarian, I don't think. Uh, no, they don't accept Bulgarian, but wouldn't have been uh, too difficult for them to just take those provinces. Regardless, I'm not the AI. It can do what it wants. Sweden is still surviving up here in just Jokmok, but unfortunately, we must say a fond goodbye to the city of Finnmark. Russia, having divided Novgorod into two uh, rather unequal pieces, a Finland side and a Kola side, uh, was able to just come in and eat the entire three development that is Finnmark. <laughs> Persia has continued to uh, look quite strong, though we do see Aretna and Karaman moving around in the territory. Uh, interesting, so Karaman is at war with Kandar, Crete, Provence, and Gazakumak. One, where is Provence? And two, why are they involved with that war? Oh, that's right, Provence is up here. Provence has had Anju this entire time. Uh, and holding on to a pretty decent alliance chain. Would explain why Gascony or Austria hasn't eaten them yet, I suppose. Just not wanting to deal with that many tags. And what is the cause of this war? It, ah, there are actually two wars going on for Kandar. Persia has decided to jump on the bandwagon. And uh, the Germanid conquest of Ankara. So, Germ excuse me, Germion trying to get one of its cores back though uh, not a core currently. Probably lost when they uh, 
seem to recall that when tags are released, uh, if they are then conquered again, those cores are lost. And we also see that Mentessa has been destroyed by Aiden. A decent battle happening over here, though we do see Crete, who has actually gotten its forces onto the mainland. Crete is retreating. And Provence is here and ready to help out, so... We'll, uh, we'll see how things go for Kandar here. I mean, obviously they're not going to stand a chance against Persia, but maybe they can uh, defend Ankara against Germion and his buddies. Looks like Trebizond is under attack by Russia. That's rough for them. Russia, of course, having permanent claims down here on all of this stuff. And interestingly enough, Theodoro choosing not to defend its historical friend. That's a bit of a slap in the face for Trebizond. Regardless, uh, Russia will very likely take these provinces, and I'm guessing Theodoro might well follow. Still, uh, them being alive until the 1600s is uh, far, far better for them than, well, pretty sure they were conquered in 15, er, 1475 in the normal timeline, so things could definitely be worse for them. Austria has retained the emperorship, no surprise there. Still getting 0 0.05 imperial authority per month. Guess, uh... I, I just guess that the Peace of Westphalia must really lower that uh, Heretic Prince's penalty. Regardless, uh, things looking pretty split as far as votes for now, including Cologne voting for Sweden. That would be a great Emperor. I'm sure he'd do just fine from way up there in the frozen north. But I'm guessing that's just... Oh, interesting. So Austria does have an heir, but they will have to invoke the Pragmatic Sanction if they want that heir to be accepted by the electors. And they'll need uh, 25 Imperial Authority to do that, so uh, they'll have to be hoping for some internal peace, otherwise the Emperorship will pass to either Prussia or Bohemia. Not sure which. Hejaz has done pretty well at consolidating uh, a lot of the Arabian Peninsula. I do believe that they'd called in Ethiopia uh, in that war, Oman perhaps guaranteed by the Mamluks, or uh, well now allied to the Mamluks, but Hejaz and Ethiopia have won that one, and uh, a lot of Oman's western territory has been taken by Hejaz, though Oman still does have a lot of its heartland, including great province over here in Muscat. Uh, Oman still Ibadi, one of the, I think, two nations that starts the game Ibadi. I think it's Oman and Mazab. Uh, if anybody watches this, feel free to correct me should I happen to be wrong there. There might be one more. I, I am not sure. Regardless, I'll go ahead and see how religion looks for now. Of course, with the Age of Reformation over, the centers of Reformation vanish. So things are pretty much set as far as the Catholic-Protestant divide is concerned. Those who have converted a Protestant are uh, likely going to stay that way, and same with those who have remained Catholic. So, of course, Austria the Emperor has remained Catholic. Catholicism has remained strong in the Polish, Mazovian, and formerly Livonian lands, or rather currently the Livonian and Livonian order. Spain has also remained staunchly Catholic, though France has, uh, well, the French area has had its share of reformed and Protestant issues. Though Gascony, who still has some Protestant provinces, uh, has remained Protestant. That said, Anjou, or, uh, Provence has decided to remain Protestant. Other than that, we do see a couple reformed nations. Holstein is reformed. It appears that Switzerland is reformed, and Ravensburg and Augsburg also choosing to go reformed. So Calvinism not immensely strong, but somewhat. Looks like Silesia and Mazovia are at war. What might that be over? Oh, that would be something Prussia has uh, decided to do. The Prussian conquest of Glogau. 
Sleazy has really just kind of been hanging on by the skin of its teeth for most of this campaign. They held on to their usual three provinces of Glogal, Rathislav, and Ratibor at the start of the campaign, but later on lost both Rathislav and Ratibor. Held on to only Glogal. I thought Saxony had launched a conquest for that at one point, decided to not take that, and uh, at one point had Ratibor return to them, so... Uh, that said, Silesia full occupied by Prussia at this point. Both of their provinces are forts. Uh, I'm guessing somebody else might be defending them, perhaps? Ah, Venice and the city of Burgas also helping out Prussia in this one. So, uh, as soon as those guys get knocked out, I'm guessing Silesia will at least be losing Glogau. I don't know if they will be made to return Ratibor. Uh, never mind. Nobody else has cores on that, so I think that should be safe. Doubt Prussia will be wanting to take that disconnected territory, if they can even core it. Kendar, uh, not looking to be in the greatest of shape. Their Anatolian provinces and Constantinople are all fully sieged. And strangely, Russia has not actually annexed Trebizond yet. Uh, Matrega, their capital and only fort. Uh, I guess someone else must be defending the or, uh, yeah, Karaman and Aretna are actually trying to defend Trebizond. So that uh, makes things a little more difficult for Russia, though it really just it's more of a time issue. Kiva looks great. They are the Central Asian power right now. Do they have any good alliances? They're allied with Kalka, Cardell, and Delhi. Delhi really the heavy hitter there. Perhaps that alliance chain could resist Russia or Persia if one of them comes knocking, but I'm guessing that if one of them goes, the other will join in. And uh, Kiva definitely in a tenuous position. Though they do have some pretty decent provinces, like Kipchak. Kipchak is 33 development, great province. And I'm sure Kiva has developed their capital, I believe that is in Urgench, at also 33 development, so they're holding on to some decent land. Are they a great power? They're not. We still have Bahmanis holding on to the last great power spot, despite being three... Sorry, two institutions, two full institutions, colonialism and the printing press, behind. We have Morocco in seventh. They've done well for themselves consolidating uh, western, northern, or northwestern Africa. They do have Tunis now. The Mamluks still holding on in sixth with 445 development. Austria in fifth with 682. Great Britain in 4th with 713, Persia in 3rd with 876, they've caught up on all institutions, good for them. Spain in 2nd with 979, and Russia in 1st with 1010. Russia the first to uh, be able to attain Empire rank if they didn't get it by forming Russia, which they did. And there is the end of that Balik war against Kandar. Jermion has taken Ankara, Balu, Optimatoi, and Constantinople. So, uh, a good take for them. They've... They haven't really usurped anybody, per se, but uh, they've taken a lot of that territory that was... Well, some of the territory that was formerly Saruhan's, and a lot of this which has been Kandar's for quite a while. And it looks like Aretna has uh, done well for the deal, or in that deal as well. They've taken Kanik and... Uh, I think they had Amasya before. Looks like Circassia is trying to help Russia out, though, in that war to take down Trebizond. Spain's still not able to consolidate the territory it lost in the League War. Though, <laughs> Catalonia actually allied with Spain, so Spain actually not able to take Valencia back for a while. Though they might be able to do a, v a peaceful vassalization of Catalonia. They are already transferring trade power. And that's really a province that uh, Spain would like back, a center of trade in the Genoa trade node. Portugal, though... Portugal is losing a war to Carib, and I don't know why Spain hasn't pounced. Spain's at war with Songhai, so trying to expand its West African dominion. And Cuba has definitely proven itself the premier Central African power. It looked to be the case before. They parlayed a rather weak position. They only had four provinces up here. Cuba itself, Nunu, Munin, Munene, Munin, 
and Kumbana, parlayed that into an alliance with Kikonja and uh, Congo, then turned on Congo with Kikonja's help, and now turning on Kikonja. So it took them a while, but they've done it. And the expected Kilwen Sofalan War is in progress. Uh, right now, it looks like Kilwa has a slightly larger army overall. overall. Uh, looks like 37 versus Sofala's 34. But that war could definitely go either way, though it looks like Kilwa with a 3 3 general. That's nice for them to have, whereas Sofala has a 3 0 1. Their ruler at that. Uh, but Kilwa destroying them in that battle. Is there a tech difference? Yes. Yeah, Kilwa has the all important tech 15 to Safala's tech 14. Looks like Kilwa is going to make some gains here. Are those two the only participants in that war? It is the Kilwa and Conquest of Kelamine. And yes, that is a 1v1 war. Rough stuff for Sofala, but uh, Kilwa has done well with itself there. That's a, a good war for them to take. We see, again, nothing changing in the Great Lakes region, and Spain's still refusing to colonize this last province here in South Africa. I mean, it's not a great one, but you'd think they might want to complete the state or something. Uh, not the case. Sakalava has still retained control of Madagascar. Nobody's bothered them there. We see Spain has colonized Mahe, as well as the islands of Mauritius and Il Bourbon. Those are pretty good islands to colonize. Uh, both of them have 11 development. And Spain has also gone and, sorry, gotten into the Indonesian and Malaysian regions, colonizing uh, up to, I believe that's Christmas Island. So Spain will likely be looking to colonize things like Lombok, Sumbawa, Flores, and Timor, which uh, gives them a pretty good base here in the region, and perhaps Australia will be in the future there as well. Imperial authority has continued to go down. There's still a good amount of princes in the empire, but it's that internal peace, I think, that is really uh, messing with Austria's favor for uh, imperial authority. Still, they have managed to either invoke the Pragmatic Sanction or get a male heir. Looks like the male heir is the one that's happened in a 555 at that. Great heir for Austria there, and uh, all of the electors, save Prussia and Bohemia, are favoring Austria as the Emperor yet again. Really, uh, seems like AI Russia has a tough time losing the Emperorship, unless there's just an insane reformation or uh, they fall under a personal union. See, Livonia has not managed to consolidate the Livonian Order's lands. They are protected by Riga, Sicily, and Brabant. Of course, Riga, the main one that they'd have to worry about there, though Brabant could pose a challenge as well. Brabant has had the Low Countries semi-mostly consolidated for quite a while, but hasn't been able to really do much with that. Looks like Nevers is trying to take out Haino, though. Also has Aachen siege down. Uh, actually, Aachen is siege down by Trier. Those colors look quite the same at this point. Uh... I thought Trier was a little bit more orange than that. <laughs> I was wrong. And uh, Lorraine has actually eaten bar at some point, so they have three provinces. Good for them. And there's Spain taking back that territory from Portugal. Knew that would only be a matter of time, and that, uh, assuming that the provinces of Kaffa and Matrega have not put Russia on top or maintain their superiority as number one great power, I think uh, Spain taking those back from Portugal will put them back on top as far as great powerdom is concerned. And we see that Bahmanis has fallen off and Kiva actually has gotten a great power spot. They are the sixth great power, having embraced whatever institution was holding them back. I'm going to guess printing press. Uh, there are some centers of trade in this region that they could have used to parlay into a embracement of global trade. But as soon as Bahmanis is able to embrace even one institution, uh, they will be taking a spot back. Over in China, looks like we've had a change in emperorship again. That looks like Emperor Yan again. So Wu has lost the Mandate of Heaven to Yan, who uh, is again losing mandate at a steady, steady pace. 0.2 a month at that. Uh, but for now, their troops will still be as strong as they would otherwise be. They might be able to 
race into uh or quickly gain some tributaries before they completely lose their mandate like they have done before ming has actually managed to probably have some cores returned to them they now are in two pieces three provinces down here in south china including some great ones in shuquan and waichou 27 and 26 development to say nothing of the ones they've had up here, Yan'an and Xi'an in northern China. So, again, they've retained their cores, and uh, it seems that they're still weak enough that when wars are won and lost in this region, uh, people are, have been willing to give them back some cores. Wu, one of, uh, another tag that was formerly a great power, of course, uh, having lost the mandate, and some of their provinces, I believe Min was released from them, Definitely some provinces that they'd want back is Mint Protected. They're actually a tributary state. <laughs> Interesting that. We see Khmer is pretty much full sieged. Uh, looks like by Pasai and Lanjiang. Huh. Well, that's rough stuff for them. This war is the... They're attacking Ava and the Arakani conquest of Mongpai, but they are trying to defend against Pasai and the Pasai conquest of Angkor, and that's not going well for them. Uh, looks like Khmer is going to lose that rather handily. Looks like their name is over two different colors here. Nah, that's just the occupations. I thought that Khmer might have a... Uh, tributary in that region that their name was superimposed over, but I think that only happens in CK2. And turn 8! Turn 8 has done some colonization. They've colonized Manila at that. Manila, a great province. 14 development, a center of trade. In which trade node? Ah, the Philippines' its own trade node. But still, great province to colonize. Uh, aside from Cape, probably the... Uh, province with the highest development that is uncolonized at the start of the game. Tador has also started colonizing, has colonized Buru. Uh, maybe not as good a first colonization target as Manila, but they've also gone and actually taken Hamahera, the province that has divided Ternate and Tador since time immemorial, one might say. So, uh, Perhaps we'll see an end one way or another to that rivalry. We shall see. Sofala has accepted peace with Kilwa and has lost all of their coastline in, and the provinces of Lolo, Makwa, and Lomwe. And Gosh, an okay province. Kelamane, excellent though. 25 development, the Zambezi estuary, and they've even lost Sofala, their likely former capital itself. So Kilwa likely to consolidate that region after a few more wars. I'm guessing Spain did take that territory from Songhai and have consolidated those provinces that were given back to Portugal. They have not, however, been enough to bump Spain into the number one great power spot. That is still Russia for now. Things still a mess in the Anatolian region. Persia did take Trebizond, or Trabzon, from Kandar, but... Uh, Apparently not able to reach the rest of it, though Kandar's European territory also going to fall very soon. Although it looks like Jeremion has taken Adirn and Burgas from the city of Burgas. So the little uh, state that Kandar worked so hard to build, that's just going to be completely lost to them. But they still have their initial territories of Castamonu and Sinope, so that's good for them at least. Theodoro only protected from Russia by their alliance with Odiev. Odiev uh, guaranteed by Persia and actually not allied with Russia. They were allied with Russia for quite a while. That no longer the case. They have ins instead decided to put their trust in Nitra and Gascony to defend them against the Russian giant. Of course, uh, Russia generally does tend to be a giant. Lots of easy expansion out here for them. Oh, Novgorod. So Novgorod is now only existing in Rovaniemi and Kainu. Finland is out again. Finland has actually managed to uh, take down the trading city of Pirkan Ma, and uh, that was actually allied with Novgorod, so 
perhaps they were released in a war with Novgorod, or uh, something happened there. They don't have the Borg, though. That was taken by Russia. Noticing that Russia has chosen not to turn Neva into St. Petersburg, so uh, it's still something that could happen in the future, maybe if we actually see a Tsar Peter. But for now, we have someone more along the lines of uh, Ivan the Terrible. I believe uh, Ivan or Ivan was the fourth in normal history. Uh, this one's a 655, though. He is malevolent and an intricate web weaver, so perhaps uh, that seems to fit him pretty well. I don't know if he was this eminently gifted, but uh, regardless, Russia probably enjoying a great time with him in charge. And he's only 36. He could stick around for quite a while yet. Assuming he hasn't been made into a general or something. Oh, I spoke too soon. There he is. He might not make it that long, though. Though it looks like Russia poised to strike against Odiev. They're, they're just sitting in Moscow, which has... I'm not sure what the supply limit is, and I'm not going to dig for a map mode there. <laughs> but, uh... Regardless, maybe not poised to strike, just uh, sitting with their army in the capital. Who knows? Silesia did lose Glogau, but was granted Vratislav back. So... Uh, and Prussia is sieging them down again. Uh, I'm guessing that Prussia might be at war with Bohemia? Oh! Prussia managed to finagle itself a coalition, and that is probably what is attacking them now. Bohemia, Brunswick, Hesse, Magdeburg, Thuringia, and Dithmarschen all involved in that, and actually... Huh. Those participants don't really line up. No, they've attacked Wurzburg in the Prussian conquest of Bamberg, and they must uh, have a bold fighter. And, well, that's that's a thing. I don't, I mean, Bohemia won't be able to fire the coalition more, but uh, someone else might be able to and drag in the rest of them against Prussia. Space Marines will only take you so far when uh, AE is involved in the equation. Looks like Gascony is at war. They're occupied by the city of Cremona. Or rather, have Avern, Cahor, and Bourbon occupied by them. They're at war with also Albania, who has been spit out since the last time we looked over there. Oldenburg, Magdeburg, Holland, Gelre, and the city of Visoki. That would be the second Milanese conquest of Cremona. Milan calling in its friends to attempt to retake its uh, former territory. But yes, Albania has been released from Venice, and Serbia has taken its other cores, though. So those uh, cut off from the main Serbian state by Albania, who has joined a trade league led by the city of Cremona. Most interesting. Kandar lost Philibay to Venice in that war, but still retains control of Oltenia and Silistria uh, at some point. Serbia did take Sofia and Nikvalu, uh, Sofia and Tarnovo, from Kandar, or whoever had control of that. Oh, and look, it's Byzantium! Byzantium also released from Venice there, Maria trying to take advantage, but uh, that's not going to work. They don't have much. <laughs> oh, lordy. Maria was on the receiving end of this far too many times in the past. You need nine troops to siege down a level three fort, guys. It's not going to work otherwise. <laughs> so Byzantium is here. Byzantium is alive. Uh, no allies, which uh, would be the only way to really get themselves out of this pickle for now. But regardless, uh, Ave, I suppose. And as expected, one of the two borders, or er, uh, one of the two fellows bordering Kiva has pounced. Looks like that's Persia. And uh, they're now having to deal with Delhi. So we'll see if newly minted great power Kiva can stand against Persia with the help of its friends in Delhi, Kalka, and Karadel. Kalka, a tag I've not seen all that often. I don't know if that's a Cossack revolter state or just something that has cores over here that uh, doesn't start with anything at the beginning or if Mongolia can form that or what the deal is. Uh, if somebody could help me out there, that'd be nice. And looking at the watch, I see I have 10 seconds left in this, so I'll just go ahead and cut off the video here. 
Thank you all for watching. This has been The Great Partition. I've been Paragon Saber. Hopefully this looks a lot better than the previous videos, and I will see you next time.